Hey guys, here's part B of the test review. Fill in each blank with the appropriate word or expression. Angle four is a blank angle. Well, angle four is sitting outside the triangle, so that would make angle four an exterior angle. Exterior angle. Cool, angle three is blank to angle four. Well, angle three is next to angle four, so the best answer would be adjacent. The word adjacent means next to. And that's what that is. It's adjacent. All right, all right. In relation to angle four, so thinking about where four is, what can we say about angle one and angle two? Angle one and angle two are non-adjacent to four. Angle three was adjacent to four. It was next to it. Angle one and two are non-adjacent, and they're also on the interior of that triangle. So we would say non-adjacent interior angles non-adjacent interior depending on who your teacher is and depending on what textbook you're looking at um, instead of non-adjacent interior you might see the word remote interior in my class we use non-adjacent interior very cool angle three and four form a what kind of pair well, they're right next to each other, yep, and they're sitting on a line. So what do we call it when they're right next to each other and they're sitting on a line? We call that a linear pair. All right, all right. And then what can we say about angle one plus angle what equals angle four? Well, that's our exterior angle theorem. And what we learned about exterior angles is that the exterior angle, angle four, is equal to the sum of those non-adjacent interiors. So if I took angle one and I added the measure of angle two, the measure of angle two, I'd get the measure of angle four. That's your exterior angle theorem that says the two, uh, the sum of your non-adjacent interiors, sum of non-adjacent interiors is equal to your exterior angle. So that's what's going on there. All right, all right, cool, cool. So on this part of the test, you're gonna see two big things. You're gonna see the uh, interior angles, which have a sum of 180, and you're gonna see the exterior angles, which are equal to those two non-adjacent interiors. Very cool. Well, the next problem, 6B. All right, all right. Um, still goes along with the figure, I guess. It says that angle four is 132. So it tells me the exterior angle is 132 degrees. It says that angle one is 53 degrees. So angle one here is 53 degrees. And it wants us to find angle two. So I'll put a little question mark there. So again, I know that, I know it's written right above, but just to say it again, I know that the exterior angle is equal to the sum adding the non-adjacent interiors or the remote interiors depending on who your teacher is if you're watching this i'm probably your teacher exterior angles 132 degrees okay non-adjacents are two and one and uh, angle one is 53 degrees and angle two is i don't know i'll put an x for i don't know a little bit of baby algebra there subtract 53 on both sides and x equals 132 minus 53. Subtraction is so hard. 132 minus 53. 79 degrees. There it is. Cool, cool. All right, guys. So that's that exterior angle theorem again. All right, question seven. Now we're dealing with the interior angles of a triangle. And I hope everybody knows, everybody needs to know that the sum of the interiors it has to add up to 180, all right? So all three of those interiors, if they're numbers, if they're expressions, no matter what, they add up to 180 degrees. So angle A plus angle B plus angle C needs to equal 180. We can substitute. We know that angle A is 65 degrees. We know that angle B is X degrees. And we know that angle C is 30 degrees. And it's got to equal 180. So guys, all I'm going to do is take my calculator... I'm going to start subtracting from 180. I'm like, all right, 
I know one of the angles is 30 degrees, so I'm going to do 180 minus 30. I'm going to subtract the 65 also. So on my calculator, I'm punching in 180 minus 30 minus 65, and I got 85. All right, so I know that missing angle, which we called X, must be 85 degrees, okay? So the measure of angle B is 85 degrees, and they got all fancy using the three-letter name. That's good. Angle CBA, yep, same as angle B. It's, it's just a different name, more specific name, and it's 85 degrees. That sounds good. So you've seen the two big things here. You've seen the... Uh, You seen the exterior angle theorem on number six A and B, okay? We did that right here, and then you got to see the interior angle theorem. So, so far you should know how to do interior and exterior angles. The next one is a little more fun because it involves algebra. It says apply the triangle sum theorem to find the missing angle measure. So they give us angle A, they give us an, ex an expression for A and an expression for B. And they tell us that C has this little box here. So you need to know that that box means something. I hope you're saying 90 degrees. Yeah, it's 90 degrees. So I know that angle A is worth that, angle B is worth that expression, and uh, measure of angle C is worth 90 degrees. So I got all three parts, and um, I can use my triangle sum theorem. So that says that angle A plus angle B plus angle C is going to add up to 180. I'm going to run out of room real soon here. Uh, and then we can substitute. Angle A is worth 5x plus 6. All right, so let's replace A with 5x plus 6 because that's what it says. Let's replace B with 6x minus 20x. 6. <laughs> and let's replace angle C with 90 degrees. All right, all right. So I'm going to move this a little bit so I can see what I'm doing. And uh, I'm going to combine like terms. I've got a couple X's here. So let's combine those and make 11X. And I've got a bunch of numbers so I can combine. Positive 6 minus 26 plus 90. I'm going to go to my calculator here. 6 minus 26 plus 90. And that's 70. That all has to equal 180. So this is a two-step equation. Let's do it. Minus 70 on both sides. 11x equals 110. And divide by 11 to get x by itself. And x equals 10. Oh, I guess it didn't really ask for that. It asked for the equation. So I guess we could have been done right here. But we really should be amazing and solve. In fact, now that we know that x equals 10, I can go back and plug that in. Since I knew that angle A was 5x plus 6, I could plug that 10 in there for x and say that A must be 5 times 10 plus 6. It's 50 plus 6, 56 degrees for angle A. Angle B was 6x minus 26, and if I plugged a 10 in there for x, because I know x is 10, 6 times 10 minus 26, 60 minus 26, I'm really bad at subtraction. Um, uh, what's that, 34? Yeah, okay, I think it's 34. Don't judge me if I'm wrong. All right, so we could find all the missing angles after finding x. Very cool, two more problems left, let's go. Find the missing angle measures. All right, we have two triangles going on here. So I'm going to start with the triangle on the bottom. And the reason I'm starting with the triangle on the bottom is because I have more information about that triangle. I know that one of the angles is 19, the other angle is 41. So what I can do is I can say 19 plus 41 plus whatever this is, angle 1, measure of angle 1, needs to add up to 180 degrees. So I'm going to use my calculator, I'm going to be like, okay, 180 minus 41 
minus 19. And that should tell me what the measure of angle 1 is. Calculator, let's go. 180 minus 41 minus 19. I've got 120. All right, so angle one is 120 degrees. So if that's 120 degrees, what do we know about angle two? You know it. I hope you're saying it in your best pirate voice. They're vertical angles, matey. That's terrible. X marks the spot for vertical angles, whatever. They're vertical angles, so angle two is 120 degrees. All right, and now I know that that's 120, that's 38, and I can figure out what angle Y is now because that triangle's got to add up to 180 degrees, just like all triangles. So I got a 38, I got a 120, and I got a Y. All right, so my calculator is going to subtract 38, and my calculator is going to subtract 120, and it's going to tell me that Y equals 180 minus 38 minus 120 the calculator tells me that y is 22 degrees all right all right and then over here it says the measure of one exterior angle of a triangle oh i don't i don't really know what they're asking for there um it's equal to the sum of the non-adjacent interiors Not really sure what that question is asking about. If it asked for the, the one that was exterior with angle Y, maybe, I could be like, okay, well, it's going to be equal the sum of those two. So 120 plus 38 makes 158. So I could find that exterior angle. Shoot, I could find this exterior angle if I wanted to. It would equal the sum of the non-adjacent interiors. So add up 19 and 120, and you get 139. So that's 139. So we could find all these exterior angles if we really wanted to. But guess what? I don't really want to. Last up says complete the proof. Triangle ABC. Well, that's what we're given. If you get that wrong, I'll be sad. Measure, uh, sorry, A plus B plus C equals 180. How do you know that? Well, you would normally have a word bank. And that word bank would have the words triangle sum theorem. We know that triangles add up to 180. C plus D equals 180. How do we know that? Well, they're a linear pair. So pick the answer that talks about a linear pair. All right. Now what you notice is they substitute. They say A plus B plus C equals 180. C plus D equals 180. So they replace the 180 with C plus D. When we replace something, that's the substitution property. That's usually the hardest one to see. And lastly, they subtract C on both sides, boo -boo, boo -boo, leaving us with A plus B is equal to D. And when we subtract on both sides, you know it's a subtraction property. The measure of exterior angle of a triangle equals the sum of the two. Oh, this again. I think it was non-adjacent interiors. All right, guys, that's the whole review. Yay, yeah, yay. Yeah. Or I guess if you haven't watched Part C, then, then go watch Part C. Bye.